Welcome to another episode of Special Moments with Stevie D. For those of you who hate watch me on a regular basis, you know that every constituency and demographic group has abandoned me because of my rank odor and my general disregard for all humanity, and rightly so. Behind Donald Rump and Stalin, only I have done more to draw out the worst in people. Case in point, I just received this moving yet forgettable letter, and I'll read it to you. Dear Stevie D, I was an anti-war peace activist, a vegetarian, and millions of followers had devoted their lives to peace because of my example. After glimpsing 30 seconds of your show, I now eat seven tri-tip sandwiches a day, start fights with Girl Scouts, and kick the shins of health workers. Because of you exclusively, I have become my greatest nightmare. Signed, sincerely, the Dalai Lama. Uh, I don't know what kind of a man would call himself Dalai, whatever, but you know, I'm used to hate mail. I'm the first to admit what a terrible person I am, and, and I love that about myself. Anyways, my family, who have always been there for me, when I needed a co-signer to pretend that I died or someone to bail me out of the drunk tank on Christmas Day, and but now even they have turned on me. On today's show, members of my very own family have come from all corners of the globe. Wait a minute, how can a globe have corners? And why does the earth turn from left to right? That's kind of strange, isn't it? Huh? Oh, I guess we're still on the air. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, I am that dumb and lonely and welcome any kind of dialogue, even if it's insults at my own expense. <laughs> but on the program today is uh, my cousins, who, family members who are going to speak on my behalf. First of all, I'd like to introduce my cousin, Shecky, who is a stand-up comic who has made a career of only doing jokes about me. Hey, Shecky. How you doing? Hey, DVD. Yeah. Thank you. And screw you. Huh? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be appearing at the uh, Punchline next weekend, the Improv on the 23rd, and I am an artist in residence every fourth Friday at Professor Haha's Old Time Laughterium, uh, located on the Industrial Development Parkway by the airport refueling station. Come and see the show. Bring a friend. If you oh, hate CBD as much as I do, you'll love it. <laughs> I love that guy. Thanks, Shecky. And all the way from somewhere south of the border, or was it west of the mountains? I don't know. We've lost track of each other over the years, but please welcome my cousin, Becky. Hey, Becky. Hey, everybody. I'm Becky. And yes, I am really ashamed to admit that this man here, Stevie D, is my cousin. As you can see, I'm vacationing in the pristine beaches of Cancun, where I also lived with my beloved Macau, Mackie. Mackie, let's take a selfie. We love taking selfies. But this interruption to come on air, instead of selfing at sea to say a few words about Stevie D, where D is mainly for disgusting, is definitely not welcome. But I'm happy to see the rest of you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Becky. And now my third cousin, twice removed by marriage, or is it once removed by blood? I don't remember. But my cousin Nicodemus is here today. Hey, Nick, how you doing? I told you to lose my number. Forget about me. We're not family. After all you've done to me, you've burned me. You burned me. You owe me for past debts as the godfather. I should have hung you a long time ago by your shriveled up sack of numb nuts. But to this day, like I said, you should have lost my number, all my contact information. You're lucky to be alive, man. He really does love like, me. Like Thanks, Nico. Blood, stickers, and water, but you don't know anything about any, what family is all about. Nothing. All right. That's cool. Uh, thank you. And i just been informed. My mother's here. Hey, Mom. How you doing? I have no what? son. Mom? I thought you were still in the sanitarium. How did they let you out so early? Why am I here, huh? You ignore me your whole life. You go off and you get married to some whore from Long Island. And I don't, don't even tell me. You don't even bother. And then you want my opinion. <laughs> I wanted you to marry Maria Lulunis. She was a little overweight, but you could have at least had some sex with her, huh? Her father was loaded. You could have had a job with this company. He was big time. And now look at you bribing people your own family to come on some stupid show and brag about your success uh but you do whatever you want huh this is america i'm just your mother mm. thanks mom that was really nice uh, could someone make sure she doesn't get in any trouble no alcohol no drugs no postal authorities please and uh, anyway we'll be right back after these messages 
from the sponsors of another pathetic show, not ours. See you. Have you ever been shot in the leg only to have the owner of the bullet claim you appropriated from him? Slipped on a hovercraft at the same time its ownership was being transferred, thus neglecting you the settlement that you deserve. Ever been in a bar fight? Soon after you had a new arm attached, an arm once belonging to someone who had just died, and they are holding you responsible for the accidental death committed by the possessed zombie arm. Are you involved in a legal predicament so strange, so macabre, so bizarre, that no other lawyer will even let you into their office? Then call the legal offices of Betty Tagliani. I'll get you the settlement you deserve, no matter how outlandish, unbelievable, or even extraterrestrial it is. I fell on a train crossing the border between two different countries. On top of that, the train company went bankrupt at the same time, but I got injured. Buddy Tagliani got me my settlement. Hey, what are the odds a decommissioned dirigible would break away from its mooring only to find its way to the middle of international waters, right where I just happened to be, standing? I got $7,500. I lost a toe and a kneecap, but still, I got 7,500 bucks. So thanks, Buddy Tagliani. <laughs> as undeserving as this guy is, he called the law office of Buddy Tagliani and won. After legal fees, court filings, and unpredictable invented ancillary expenses, he really ended up with only about $47. But we won and proved them wrong. Call the law office of Buddy Tagliani. I'm prepared to believe you. And we're back. I'd like to start by hearing from my cousin Becky regarding what a wonderful scoundrel I've tried to be. Hopefully she'll confirm that. Becky? Yeah, so where do I even start? <sighs> Let me talk about this one summer. This one time, Stevie D came to spend the summer with us in Cancun. We fed him, took him to nice places. My dad got him a bike. And I even got my best friend to go on a date with him because even at that age, he wanted to have an arm candy wherever he went. And in return, this is what he does. This scoundrel, who almost always smells like a skunk, decided to put on this new perfume, which he claims he got from some Asian Zen master for therapeutic purposes. My poor friend didn't know which was worse, Stevie the skunk or this perfume, which was extracted from the underarm sweat of a Komodo dragon. When she expressed her displeasure, this man thought it would be funny to keep raising his underarm and forcing her to smell. She told him not to do it once. No effect. Twice. No effect. The third time he responded saying if she smells his underarm for an extended period, it would heal all her freckles and suck out all of her body fat. You remember that. <laughs> My friend, despite being body shamed, gave him a final warning. The fourth time, when he ignored her polite requests and lifted his arm for her to smell, she bit him. In his underarm, of course, what was she to do? Since then, Skunky claims that he has developed this underarm rash, which returns every summer. What we don't know for sure, if it was the bite that caused the rash or the dragon sweat. Either way, Skunky deserves it. Enough. What about how great of a cousin I've been? Yeah. You're great. You're as great as the Great Wall of China. Great in terms of height, weight, and bad sense of humor. You have a great bad sense of humor. Okay, well, thanks, Becky. I'll remember that when that terrible arm rash returns. <laughs> now, my second cousin twice removed, or my uncle by marriage. Darn, I keep forgetting how we're related. Anyway, Nicodemus? We're not related. Like I said, I excommunicated you when you did me wrong with all the debts that you owe me. The, we shared jobs, we shared businesses. You don't do families, and let alone the women that we shared. I would go in, try to sweet talk these beautiful ladies, and then I'd bring them around you. You were a snake, man. What you, you expect? Would kicking them to the curb. I would do all the hard work, try to sweet talk them. And what would you do? You would take them from me, man. <laughs> And then you fathered all these kids with these women. And now they're homeless. The, the kids are living in the streets. You don't support them. Just like you don't pay on your support payments. They don't know where to garnish. There's no income sources. But there's a line of people, debtors waiting. 
You owe me money too for all those bad debts, that you, all those bad debts and the gambling debts on top of it. You're a degenerate gambler. We ended up putting bets for Ohio State, Michigan. You would still pick Ohio State when all along Michigan Wolverines were the better team. Never, never. But hey, you still even rooting we for kids? the Browns. The Browns haven't haven't even gone to the Super Bowl. They're horrible. Same oh. with the Indians. They're cursed. Something Don't talk about the Indians. With the Ohio loyalty. That's right. Hey, remember all the swirlies I gave you growing up? Swirlies? Yeah. I'll show you a swirly. <laughs> like I said, you should have. I want nothing to do with you. That's it. You, you had your chance to be family. Family is one who is committed, loyal, blood is thick, thicker than water. And the way you've done me, you've done me wrong. You, like I said, you stole my women. You ended up, all my businesses fell, went under. Forget about the jobs. You won't even show up to work. That's You're a malinger. You're a malinger, a philander. Like I said, in my eyes, I'm done with you. And I don't even know how I'm going to collect, but I'm going to find a way. Don't worry. And it's not going to be good. There will be serious consequences when you owe the piper. That's the wonderful, Godfather. Nico. Remind me to change related. my name after this show. And uh, mom, where did she go? What, what do you want to tell the world about me, mom? How great I am? No, no. You remember that nurse, Miss Lemin Yotakis, at the hospital where you and your sisters were born? She called today to check on me because she knows that old people die every day. And remember to ask her, I remembered uh, about your horrible case of hemorrhoids. I told her how it runs in the family. Uh -huh. You had to pass the donuts along over the years. What? Remember when you had them so bad years ago? I know you still have them. Just take the surgery, Stevie. Miss Lemon Yotakis assists in these surgeries every day. She remembers you well. And she said, go by the hospital when she's working and she'll make you an appointment appointment since you're still on my insurance. And by the way, you need to find your own insurance. You are a grown man now, at least by 30 years. And you know what else she told me? Mr. Statikopoulos died on Sunday. I sent money to the church for flowers or whatever they want to do with it. But you know what's really weird about the way he died? He had a stroke while taking out the garbage and he fell right in, right into the bin and it was full to the top. So he dropped his face right into the moldy peach pie that his neighbor had made him the week before and they didn't find him all night. And the next morning when the garbage collector came and he found him, he lifted his face up and it looked like a runny lasagna slice. You know, like the kind that your whore, I'm sorry, uh, your ex-wife used to make. Why so much sauce? What are you trying to cover up? The fact that you don't know how to cook al dente? Hmm. Oh, how that bitch could talk, running her mouth like a sauce, right, like an uh, old village woman. Jesus, uh, please, please. And I can only imagine what kind of things she was saying about me behind my back. Of course. Oh, You're rid please of remind me to never let my mother out of her room. Thanks, Ma. Now, Cousin Shecky. Uh, cousin? Uh, Shecky? I'm, I'm here for you, man. Oh, thanks. And by that, I mean I'm not. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, uh, um, I believe you are familiar with my commitment to uh, hating everything you do. Uh, you've been horrible to me. You, you, uh, you turned on me. You betrayed me. When? When? Uh, when? A little summer of uh, two thousand. Well, summer winter two thousand and eight. Remember, I was going with Ron Paul, Republican nominee, and you said, "Oh yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you." And right at that Ron Paul event, you remember, he said, "Oh, I'm going with Mike Huckabee." He's a winner. He's a winner. Didn't Thank he win? you. Left me holding the bag, standing out there. All these people. I said, oh, yeah, my cousin, Stevie D. He's a great guy. He's for Ron Paul. And you're like, no, no. <laughs> I have the 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 insight to <laughs> assume that Mike Huckabee is going to be president. Yeah, thanks a lot. And ever since then, you know, uh, I'm sorry. A, uh, a hellfire of rain will descend upon you every day. From my soul. That's my commitment. And I've decided yeah. to channel that, as you know, into a uh, successful stand-up comedy career because so many people hate you that uh, I've been able to uh, make a little cottage industry out of uh, hating Stevie D. Didn't know there were that many people. Wonderful. Stevie D. Now I remember why I haven't spoken to you the past 35 years. I thought it was because I was incarcerated into a Turkish prison or I was watching reruns of I Love Lucy. Yeah, that's great. Or maybe it was past my bedtime. Hey, I got the... I got I got some new material. Please watch this. 
We'll cut to commercials. Thank you. <laughs> I am Dr. Nucleon. As an international supervillain, I need to eat a hearty meal so that I have the energy for my dream of global domination. That's why the only restaurant I threaten... I don't... God damn, motherfucker. Sorry, guys. I don't know. I am Dr. Nucleon. As an international supervillain, I need to eat a hearty meal so that I have the energy for my dream of global domination. That's why the only restaurant I don't threaten is Luigi's Italian Restaurant in Pacifica, California. Their rigatoni gives me the stamina to destroy international communication networks and church bake sales. Luigi, you are safe from itinerary. Ter you are safe from itinerary. We can fix it in post, right? I am Dr. Nucleon. As an international supervillain, I need to eat a hearty meal so that I have the energy for my dream of global domination. That's why the only restaurant I don't threaten is Luigi's Italian Restaurant in Pacifica, California. Their rigatoni gives me the stamina to destroy international communication networks and church bake sales. Luigi, you are safe from my tyranny. Oh, man. Sorry, sorry, tyranny. I am Dr. Nucleon. As an international supervillain, I need to eat a hearty meal so that I have the energy for my dream of global domination. That's why the only restaurant I don't threaten is Luigi's Italian Restaurant in Pacifica, California. Their rigatoni gives me the stamina to destroy international communication networks and church bake sales. Luigi, you are safe from my tyranny. And by the way, Luigi, I'll be there at five tonight for those killer meatballs. Hooah! Welcome back. Nicodemus told me while we were off the air that he relishes the moments we spent together as children in different continents. He in Europe and me hiding from my parents in the Bering Sea. And with that, let's hear from Bob. I mean, uh, what, what's your name again? Oh, Nicodemus. Your long lost cousin, like I said, don't be lying to the general public. I want Not nothing. Much. You're a total scumbag, like I said. Thanks. Now, to add insult to injury, you're on the FBI's most wanted list to deport for all those oh, financial cool. scandals. I don't forgive you for what you did to me. You've done me really wrong. Even when my own when my own pops passed away, your uncle, what were you doing? You were taking out my mistress and trying to bang her and then kicking her to the curb while I'm weeping and paying my respects. Where were you? For good to cause. To your uncle. It was for a good cause. Like I said. Good morning. Not only that, you were swindling my mother. You swindled your own mother, your aunts of their pensions. You're just rude. You fart out. Like I said, you smell. No, not. You kick. You kick. Oh, yeah, I kind of do. Yeah. Well, what about all the money I gave to charity? From us. You owe us, man. You got to pay it back to these poor little old ladies. Well, what about if I give now, you some tips on the at the racetrack for horses? You're a deadbeat. You don't pay. <laughs> you don't pay. And like I said, you got to pay the piper. And it's serious. When you do your family wrong, there's dire consequences that come with that. You need a new swirly. That's what you need. That'll make you feel better. That and a good enema. When my foot goes where, where the sun don't shine, you won't, you won't like that. But like I said, I cut you off a long time ago. And right now, I appreciate the opportunity to show you how disgusted I am with you. And I'm coming after you. And you're not going to like it. You're going to have to pay. That's and why I don't tell anybody you. where I live. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Nowadays we got GPS. We find out where everybody is. Okay. Well, thank that's you, what, Nico. That's we pay our taxes for the satellites to operate efficiently. Thanks. Uh, again, uh, my dear mother, is she still here? Anyway, oh, I'm here. Uh, I was hoping someone escorted her to the bus stop. Mom, you are you there? Please put down the box. If you listen good, I want you to know something. Your father insisted that I get a life insurance policy when we were living in Ohio years ago, and I did. And after he left us, I didn't change a thing. And you know that I'm getting old. And as my mother used to say, when the Lord calls, you have to have your bags packed and ready to go. Oh, we never know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I might go to sleep tonight and not wake up. And then I'll be with your father. 
like, you I ever tell you about the time that your uncle Pete came to our wedding and said, I hope it works out. I hope it works out. What an inconsiderate thing to say to newlyweds. Well. Our family is full of morons. Well, I'm telling you. So you have some reflection today, Stevie, because you will be surprised to know that my only will and testament that I wrote before your father passed, bless his soul, is long. And it includes everyone in the family. Everyone but you. What do you mean? You could have done anything you wanted. You could have had made a decent living with a good company. You could have made a decent woman out of Maria, oh, given me no. grandchildren and made money. But instead cash. you are here and look at you. What a she hairy, eyes. hairy man you turned out to be. Such a disappointment. I hope when you die, when I die, your sisters enjoy the riches that we left them and you correct all of your mistakes. God giving money to them? You, Stevie. They're God. fat and ugly and stupid. They're going to squander it away. Mom, did you take your medication today? Don't talk to me anymore, Stevie. I don't want nothing to do with you. Okay, thanks, Mom. Uh, cousin Becky, not that I really care, but what do you think about me? What do I think about you? Yeah. I tell, you. I tell everybody what I think about you. I had a little crab as a pet growing up. My father had gifted it to me on my birthday. And this was no ordinary crab. My crabby would follow instructions like a pro. He even communicated back to us. If you said Krabby sit, he sat. If you said Krabby swim, he swam. Krabby became so famous that all the local news channels wanted to cover him. Channel Z was even developing a talk show with me and Krabby. And I got a pretty decent check for that too. We were all happy. All my cousins were so fond of him. Krabby went with us wherever he went. And then one day I had gone for my surfing lesson and I left my cousins to play with Krabby, including the disgusting Stevie D. When I returned, Krabby was gone. I could find him nowhere. I asked all my cousins, no one said a word. They seemed scared as if sworn to seek. Becky? Amen, sister. You got frozen there. Okay, well, uh, thanks, Becky. The check is in the mail. And uh, last, definitely least, cousin Shecky. Hey, Shecky. Seriously, Mike Huckabee, really? All right. All right. So, well, as you know, uh, I got some new material, but it, I, I've been trying out. Everybody loves it. I get into a taxi and ask the driver, take me to where I can find the cheapest action. He takes me to Stevie D's house. Right, did you hear? <laughs> Stevie D walks into a bar, and the bartender says, get the hell out. That's it. Did you hear the coronavirus came down with the case of Stevie D? Oh, yeah. It's true. You know, Stevie D's so dull, paint washes him dry. <laughs> Bad, but I like it. How about hey, the time that uh, we went over the barrel together in Niagara Falls? Remember that? That was fun. Yeah, you pushed me out of it. I almost died. <laughs> well, you learned how to swim. Oh, okay. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. That's a great but way to I didn't to give you any swim. swirlies because you didn't have any hair. Oh, so now That's it's the hair. Thing. Now it's the hair. Always with the hair. You know, not all of us can have a full luxurious head of hair like you the the you know you're always saying oh i'm the michael landon of hair you know uh, and look at me you know okay so i started balding when i was 16 you know you didn't have to rub it in you didn't have to rub it in and okay. another uh, reason i don't like you uh, as that well you smell as it's been aforementioned um but you i hate you Art. so much i have spent money to have my dna changed that's right i have legally DNA changed? changed my dna so there is no trace of stevie d in my DNA. That's how much I hate you. Thank you. I think Becky has something to say. Becky, are you back? Hello? Yes, I'm back. Oh, there she is. Oh, I like that. I'm in, I'm in the beach, so of course I'd have poor connection. And you did this to me intentionally. Caught me from the beach on air. But whatever. Let me please share this incident with you guys. This was back from Halloween when we were kids. You look at that this man's bad, bad memories. Bad memories. Really, really bad memories. My poor little cousin, Nico. You know what he did? We were so That's happy. The nail in the coffin. Yeah, we were so happy for Halloween. And our parents asked us to pose for a picture. And we decided to do a boo. Everybody did a small boo. But Stevie D's boo was so loud, so loud and so obnoxious that our neighbors turned against us and called the cops. The cops came and Stevie D being Stevie D put the entire blame on Nico. Our poor cousin Nico had to take the fall for it. I've been this scarred for the... life because of that. Scarred for life. That. Scarred for life. Uh, well, I think we're running out of time here, folks. Thank you very much, all my lovely. Oh, it has never been the same since. I never got to experience a 
proper Halloween as a I result. I blocked that from my memory. Well, uh, I've been what a day for a picnic. Uh, just like the old days when most of my relatives would come over to our house, eat our food, tell stupid jokes uh, about hairy Scottish men, and then lock me in the closet while they went to the track. And just like the old days, I'm still that pathetic and I cry myself to sleep. But I will say this, when little old ladies cross the street, when poor families can't pay their electric bills, when underprivileged children don't have enough to eat, is it still my turn to speak? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I guess that is, that's uh, what we're doing here. Why are you all staring at me? You're all ugly. You, you must not be related to me, actually. Look at <laughs> the mirror. Not genetically anymore. Hey, put that gun down. The show wasn't that bad. Oh, uh, okay. I promise to give you candy when we're off the air. Okay, guys. I think I got to go uh, before somebody shoots me here. I hope you vote. Bye. I wish I'd never had you. What an excuse uh -huh. of a human being. Okay, uh, yeah, that. Dr. Feelgood's Laffetarium every other Friday. Come and see the Stop show. Get not lost. funny. Not funny at all. I mean, I thought of it. I'm coming after you. Don't worry. Hey, you got ball, you got game tickets for the next ball game, Nico? We can go together. We'll yeah, double date. You'll be the last person I take. I'd rather take Shecky and even your mom. Your mom, my auntie. That's right. Don't I'm take her. Hi, Tia. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I'll take my Tia and my cousin. Hey. I'll just take all my.